Okay. Okay. Call the Newport City Council meeting to order from Monday, April 3rd, 6.30 p.m. The City Council Room. All members of the Council are present. I'd like to welcome our two new members, uh, James and Julie. We'll be at the meeting this evening. Others include James Johnson, the Clerk Treasurer, and Laura Dogan, our City Manager. James there. The next item would be to approve the minutes of March 20th and then also March 27th. And I will entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll make a motion. You want to do them both at once? If to approve the council minutes of 20 March 17 and 27 March of 17. A motion has been made. Is there a second? No second. Made by Mr. Wilson, signed by Mr. Chenette. Discussion? Yes. On the minutes? Yes. Um, on the minutes of March 20th, bottom of page one under city government appointments. It states that Mr. Wilson moved to appoint Laura Dolgan city manager and it was seconded by Mr. Wilson. Motion Gary. I think I might have been here that night, but I don't recall. You did it all. Mr. Chenette did that. Yeah. I'm just gonna hand write it. Okay, write it in. I'll write it here. I wasn't sure which one I did, so Okay. Whichever one you choose is fine with me. Other than that, to the fine. All right, so a motion made and seconded in the one correction. Anything else on the minutes? Then, I would, then all those approved say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have. Motion carries. Next item is comments by members of the public. This is an opportunity for members of the public to make comments on items which are not on the agenda this evening. Uh, usually, no, we don't take any action. We just take it under advisement. And um, so with that, any comments? Yes. A couple of weeks ago, there was an article in the paper from Mr. Goldberg from J, J Peak, about how everything else had fallen in line. <coughs> But the hole down here in Newport was up in the air. Now, it's my understanding the federal judges told him he could sell it. I'd like somebody, maybe you need to have him come and invite him to a meeting and let us know where we stand. Because it sounds like we're taking the back seat, and that's wrong. Please. Consider it. I appreciate it. We'll consider it. <coughs> Anything else? Yes, Mrs. Willard. Okay, yes, I'm Joan Willard from Sloan Street, and I've spoken with Ms. Dobrin. 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 Sorry. Uh, I've been having this issue for a good 30 years or more, and I've been dealing with Mr. Ward before Ms. Dobrin um, took over. Um, he has sent over um, Mr. Bernier, and so has Ms. Dobrin sent Ms. Mr. Bernie over. At one time he took a large grater and graded my entire front yard to grade it down so that the water would drain in and off to the sides and down the back of my yard. Um, this is the biggest problem that I have is being the drainage for the Blake Street, Sloan Street. Everything comes down into my uh, driveway and backyard. Um, I can't grow, I have an herb garden on the left hand side that is not feasible anymore because of salt and silt and pollutants going down and my garden was on the other side and we've raised it up and I'm still not certain that it's okay to plant there but we don't have gardens anymore. So my issue is um, I would like to pave my driveway again but it's hard to pave it when my driveway is freezing with water. I have a skating rink in the winter that thaws, freezes, it thaws. Um, and in the summer, I have a large lake of water. When people get out of the car, in fact, I think Mr. Wilson came to have me sign a petition one time. And he got out of the car and said, you have a lake in your driveway. He <laughs> says, yes, it's very hard for people to get out of their cars. And sometimes the water is about three feet from my driveway. That's how bad it can get. 
um, I'd like to have a more permanent solution, not only for me, but I noticed um, my neighbors also have this problem. Mrs. Fontaine has a water in front of her yard, and the Massons still have water. One day, well, the day that I call Miss Dolgren, it was all the way halfway across the road. So there's still puddles of water forming on our street, and I noticed at the end of our street, we're getting those potholes again. And that was one of the issues why it was paved some 30 years ago, because of, I'm sure, because of all the potholes at the end of the road. Um, but I, I would like to ask the, the council and the children to maybe come up with a more permanent drainage solution. I, I really don't want to be the drainage area for the street. That's my request, <laughs> that I'm no longer the drainage Laura, did you take yeah. some notes on that and yeah. maybe get with Tom and yeah. try to figure it out? It's a, I know it's a complicated situation. It, it is. Right. And we we right. had, before Mr. Bernier came over, we had ditches dug in our yard, um, in our lawn. It's not a pretty picture, but, you know, it was a kind of a solution. It didn't take care of all the water. But when the guy did it, it just fills in with all that silt and dirt again. Mm -hmm. So when Mr. Bernie came and I told him, well, it's just going to, you can grade it, but it's going to fill in again. And it's filled in, and now it's not draining. It's coming just in the driveway, and it's staying there again. Um, something really, really should need to be done. I don't know <coughs> well, it would help me. <laughs> but, but it's just, it's not just you. It's the neighbors surrounding yeah, you also. Right, and I looked at down in back of me where it comes down Blake Street, drains into my um, side yard on the right-hand side of my yard, goes right back into Jack DeGrees, and he had a big puddle of water in front of his house a few weeks back. He's so, you, right? Right. Yeah, well, a diagonal. Diagonal, right. Yes. Yeah. So this isn't just my problem. I think that many of the neighbors, and I know Mr. and Mrs. Masson have addressed this also in the past, but. Um, it, it, I think it contains three streets of us. All three streets need to have some sort of drainage. Okay. So if we could maybe try to, I know it's not a simple solution, but maybe we could try to come up with something that. Uh, we'll have to take a look at it and assess it. Because I think it is going to be really com complicated and expensive. And I think we're once we can even come up with some sort of solution, we're going to have to figure out where on the priority list it falls, because there's a lot of work ahead of this one. Yep. So I, it's nice to meet you guys in person. Well, nice talked on the you. phone. Um, so <laughs> I've taken pleasure. notes and, and dated it. Uh, you've always been very pleasant to, to speak with also, but. Um, I know you're not happy with the outcome. Well, it gets frustrating. It's, like I said, I'd like to take my driveway, but it's it's going to be ridiculous to keep paving it. When was that street paved last time? Like, I, that's like, I don't, I don't recall. It's got to be 30 years. She's, she's <laughs> about yeah. right. About 30 years ago. Yeah, oh, yours was paved that, but I, I try. I'm getting mixed up with yours now. Yeah, mine yours was mine is the oldest street. But yours was paved at, after her street. Yeah. Yeah. Yours was recently done. Right. Well, yeah, okay. Yeah. I just. But all of those. Blake and Sloan Street. Right. Jackson Street is all right as far as I know, but they were never designed properly. Jackson Street, I think, was done well. I'm not positive. Okay. The others were just sort of thrown together like most of the other streets. Now we have standards that so know the first street. They the really have strict have standards now. So, okay. We do. We have very strict standards for streets. And our now. street was raised probably three inches or more when they did pave it. When they did. And that's why my my driveway was always an issue, but it really got bad after that. After. After okay. that paving. Okay. Well, thank you for coming, and thank you. We'll try to work on work on some sort of fix to it and see what we can come up with. We have to assess it. After assess it, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. After assess and try to figure out what we're gonna do. Okay. Any other comments from anyone in the audience before we move on? 
then we'll move to the <coughs> next item on the agenda is website quote and just a little background um, the website that the city currently has was created and has been maintained over the years by myself and I've gotten to the point that I can no longer do it it's gotten too big and need a lot more information on it than I have the time to do it and um, so we asked for a proposal from a company called Gov Office. They are associated with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns and we asked for a quote for a complete um, basically interactive website. Um, I'm going to scroll down here and give a little, I don't know if we can read that, I'm going to make that larger on here. There. There, that, I think it's easy to read. Uh, they're our leader, they've been, Gov Office, I remember meeting with them several years ago to talk about the website at the time, and they were just starting to work with the Vermont League. And basically the website that they would design, um, they would design the whole layout of the website, they would integrate, um, they would set up as an easy to use content management system so that the staff here can update their sections of the website. Um, the nice thing is they would maintain um, complete responsibility, worrying about having it backed up if something should ever happen to it. And it basically, the city website, it's outgrown what I can do with it. And I just don't have the time to volunteer to do it anymore, because basically it's been me volunteering to do the website for many years, and it's basically, I've gotten so busy with other things, it's become the issue. But the nice thing is we can integrate, we can still integrate, have a calendar, have a complete interactive news section, which will make it much easier for us to put up um, news items, like emergency items on it. You can have it, you can sign up for like newsletters. You receive updates right directly from the site so that you could get, um, you could get, say a street was having an issue, it's easy to have it posted on there and go out via the website and come, and you would receive it, say, say via email or interactive like that. Um, I just wanted to try to get out. Okay, this is a, the rough mock-up that they came up with. And then we'd have quick links, like a quick link right here to all the agendas. Um, contacts, the police department, you know. This is just samples. Um, you can have our zoning code very easily accessible on the first page. We would have the city calendar over here. Um, the nice thing with this website is we can we could evolve it into accepting payments online, which a lot of municipalities are now doing. Um, basically it would allow people to we could integrate the rec department for Prouty Beach so people could reserve camp spaces and pay interact. That's one of the things we have now where it's more difficult and kind of cumbersome for people to reserve spots at Prouty Beach. We could even have it where if someone's coming down, a seasonal camper and even boater, the dock could pay their annual dock fees via the website, which would be much more user friendly than what it is now. Um, you could even have it where of course, with any municipal site, there is, as the state does, a convenience, they call it a convenience fee, which the state has a convenience fee that is that here, that covers the cost of the credit card aspect. But it would really make it much more user-friendly for the residents and um, much more accessible. We do get requests for people to pay their taxes online or to go on a payment plan online and it's automatically deducted and we don't have that capacity at this time. Right. So, and, and that that's something that would be nice to ease into, but that's also an impact on the people who work in the treasurer's office. Correct. So we want to be respectful of how it impacts them, and we mm -hmm. want to make sure that feature works well before it was actually Because right now we do accept credit cards at the dock for... We, we do, and some of the registrations are accepted online as well, and it requires some follow-up with um, some of the people that work in the treasurer's office. Right. And I, I, I get the impression it could go a little bit better 
and some of the improvements could be um, from things that we can take responsibility for on our, our the people end. Right. And it's easy, it's, the one we have now, it's easy for them to pay, but it's a lot of time involved in reconciling the thing and getting in the cash receipts. It's not an easy thing. Right. It's easy for them to put their payment in. That's not the end of it. So we want to make sure that before we actually uh, took advantage of that feature that we had a nice, fine oil machine. Right. But this is some of the um, features that they allow through the site. You have unlimited sections, number of links, um, <coughs> breaking news on the main page. Um, we could eventually have like <coughs> online form, comment forms. We could do polls and surveys um, integrated right on the site. So. It would have been much easier. I know we did come up with that survey, but through the Google, but this would be I think, an easier way to have a survey when we did the solid waste plan. Um, we can have all sorts of surveys on your website. That's great, because we ended up doing that using the free version of SurveyMonkey. Oh, that was SurveyMonkey. That wasn't Google. That and was SurveyMonkey. We, we were allowed to max out at 10 questions, but the survey the state wanted us to do was 12 or 13. Right. <laughs> so we were a little... Um, we were kind of hamstrung on that. We did the best we could with what we had. Only about nine people filled it out. But if you had that availability and the website was more engaging and people learned to refer to that more frequently, I think we could have something that would be very usable for the city. And this would make it much easier for a Laurel who works in Laura's office to yeah. update. And all the various sections. And, right. and department manager, I had a couple managers, department heads. Um, can update very easily um, the website. We've um, not had an official webmaster, and I, I just want to oh, reiterate. I technically right. was, but I did. I was way behind and for couldn't free. keep up for, for free. free. I was doing it for. I've been doing it probably 15 years for free. <laughs> yes. Would it allow the planning commission and DRB to have an email address, which they don't have currently? I don't know. That's not email. That is that's separate. That's we have our we have our email system through Google. Google. So it's a matter that we would have we have to have budget for that. Budget for additional email addresses. Right. And so every email account costs money. That sort of makes it less efficient as a system because it means you can't contact them directly. Aren't there contact Aren't there the members' contact information on the website? There are their home phone numbers, but there's no email. That, that might be a personal choice. No, it's not their choice. And I'm sure Park Curtis will come and tell you that. It's not their choice. It comes down to funds. If we do this, then we don't do something else. So, you know, you start with the primary contacts and you branch out as your funding allows. We can find out from GovOffice what the in email integration is. We could find out from them. The respo a response form, like a, a feedback form. On here you can create all sorts of forms, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm just trying to get down. Can you look at each one of them? I am getting there. I will get there. I'm just trying to get down there. <clears throat> So the, as you can see, there's lots of standard features that this site will allow. And the, we'll come to the, the cost, mm -hmm. which is right here. It's based upon your population, right here. So for three years, this is the cost. So we're looking at around forty-two hundred and five dollars per year. But that total of twelve thousand six twenty-five is all of these totaled up. Yes. But aren't these three the top three for only those one years each year? Year one, year two, year three. It's just They're a weirdly put together. together chart. It's a weird chart. You're looking at hosting, annual web hosting, maintenance, training, technical support, 
the Super 4 module, year mm -hmm. one is 1550, mm -hmm. then another 1550. They, what they did is they total, this is the total for three, the total, right? the way they did it. Or shouldn't it be each one of those years and then the three bottom items totaling up? In other words, you're not going to pay for years one and two and on year three. You're going to pay the 1550 each year, and then those other three items are additional. I thought the total that we would pay in a three-year contract was 12,625. Yeah. So each payment of each year would be the 4205. The bottom the, three are the, across for three years of service. Right, math doesn't work. Right. Now that, now that I look at it again. I mean, it's close. It's close, but it's not exact. I come up with approximately 38 or 8. We can contact them. I was. <coughs> You're right. Because if you take. Is that their startup discount for three years, or? Oh, no. You have a license per year. The original, the full migration is the four, those are one time cost. The 1465 and the 75. And the bottom three items cover all three years. Correct. Let me just do something here quick. Mm -hmm. Let me just add up something. different way and I come up with even a different number than you did. Cool. Yeah, so we got to contact them on that law, mm -hmm. on that aspect, because I didn't even, I was looking at just the bottom number, <laughs> the bottom line of that. And so um, we need to look and figure out. But you're right, right, Dennis, it'd be the 1500, but it's the last three. I've divided up over three years. They don't, you don't have to pay it all up front. Is the way I understood. You see what I'm saying? Right. The, well, the, so the 1,400, the 65, and the 75. Mm -hmm. That they would divide up. They right. Basically, they gave a total cost. But if you add up this as a total cost, right, mm -hmm. and then you divide it by three years, that you're actually getting that over the three-year period. Right. But the way it's the way this. But you add that is. up. But if you add all that up, it doesn't equal that. It's off by 200. Something. So I just we'll have to get the numbers straightened out yep. from them. It's a, something that I, over, I overlooked, obviously, and, um, on that aspect. Let me just double check here. But that, but that, uh, but it's a rough ballpark figure. You know, so we got to get it down to the exact number. But the idea is that they would. They would maintain the entire site and maintain the backbone of it, worrying about the backup of it at night, worrying about the whole the whole hosting and everything, and, and redesign the site to integrate a lot more into it um, than what what is currently there. Yes. Did they give you an es uh, a couple of questions? Did they give you an estimate of what it would cost thereafter to keep up the maintenance? Um, what are the cities are using this, and what uh, oh. what competition in terms of um, creating a site like this is there, and what do they charge, and where's the money coming from? Is it coming from our budget, or can we get a grant or somebody else? This is not grant it? funded. Grant funding does not cover annual operational. Um, this is money that is in the budget. This would have to come out of our operational budgets and it would be divided amongst the departments. This is an example of, um, in Vermont, 
Okay, this is out of Vermont, but in Vermont, let me go to um, St. Albans. Yeah, I know St. Albans. Um, was it Rutland as well? Right, Rutland was the newer version. St. Albans is several years old. Remember, he said St. Albans was several years older. Do you want to try looking at one? Yeah. <coughs> This is Rutland. That's Rutland's website. And they have all sorts of information in the meeting and minutes, the <coughs> charter, ordinances. They have online payments integrated. And do we know how much it costs thereafter, after the first three months, uh, three years? After the first three years, for my that I do not know. We didn't ask for only this initial, but I'm assuming you're looking at about fifteen hundred a year. So that's Rutland City there. I mean, they got everything broken down much. You got a typo there. That should be a, probably a capital E if you want to make it. <laughs> <coughs> and then Actually, I see. That figure might be correct. That figure? It might be correct. It might be. Well, I went about two different ways. First off, I came up with 38 away, but 38 away is what I came up with originally. But because if you take the bottom three, total those up and add 15, 50 to it, that's what you would have. Yeah. For a year figure, it should be about the same thing actually. Because that's 79, 75 divided by three would be 2658, and then the 15, 50. This is St. Albans that also uses. I have not researched all the ones in Vermont, but I knew these two, and I have to talk to my counterparts, the Mayor of St. Albans and the Mayor of Rutland, the former Mayor of Rutland, and, um, who said they were very happy with the Gov Office service and the ease of use and the ease of getting information out to the public. Because right now, if there's a glitch, Laura has to contact me, and sometimes she's waited a week to two weeks, unfortunately. So that's the big push to, it's a push on my part, really, just to, mm -hmm. I can't, can't do that much on this uh, anymore. And obviously I've been working too cheap, I guess, over the years. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, this, our current website's about $125 a year. I can't just, hosting? Yeah. Yeah, per year. And actually I haven't even submitted a bill to the city. <laughs> I've just been doing it all. <laughs> I haven't. I just been, you know, just really too cheap. Really, really too cheap. Yeah, I've just created it because I, I felt the city needed to have a web presence because at the time years ago, yeah. there was like resistance to it, and so I just went ahead and did it. And then it evolved from there, and um, but. And there's been a number of times in the past year or so that it's gone offline, right? I don't know if it was hacked or some. Couldn't, couldn't it got, get it to update. Well, it got hacked. It got hacked, and then it also um, had a couple other glitches. And then, of course, my time didn't allow me to instantly drop everything to get it updated. This is the current site that I just have. I mean, and so, but the new uh, the the new layout would be much better. Um, this was actually a partly a work in progress to change the whole thing, and then it got to the point where I just didn't have time. And so. We've gotten a free ride for a long time, and it shows. But thank you. <laughs> time comes down to time. Because I used to have more time, you know, to keep it updated and do things and bring it more interactive. And it's just, unfortunately, when you, you just plain run out of time. And, um, and so that's just briefly the proposal, but I know from what I've seen from speaking with my counterparts, they're very happy with the level of service they're getting. And the reason why I focused on the Gov Office 
Um, it's because they were they were came recommended from the Vermont League. They've got that partnership with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, also. And I remember speaking to them several years ago about it. But back then the back then um, it wasn't ex wasn't the council wasn't open to it doing it. I think because of the cost back then. Well, times have changed, and now it's almost I don't know how you can be a municipality and not have one. Right. And so, um, I really think that we should look to move forward with it. <coughs> Laura has, there is money in the budget. Uh, not budgeted, but she has found money in we'll, the budget. We, like I said, we'll scrape from each department um, out of our operating expenses, which means we won't spend in another area to make up for it. But I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a mission critical tool that we need to have, and it, the migration, one of the pages, could you go back to their quote? <coughs> because I think on the next page they have a schedule of events. So if you scroll down, it gives you um, the timeline. Right, that's okay, that's good. We haven't agreed on a model or what the, what the picture will look like. They recommended the um, mountain facade and they really encouraged us to go with the color blue because apparently that's a very soothing color to the eye when you're doing website design. So they were, that's as far as they got. We, we didn't give them any feedback about whether or not we liked the picture of the mountains or the lake. There's no reason we wouldn't like it, but you know, he just grabbed that for purposes of the, of the proposal to give us an idea of what and it And he also said like. being on the lake, the blue is, blue associates with the lake too. I mean, it seems like a logical. But blue is picture. very soothing to the eyes and, and my arcane computer days when it was the old DOS-based systems, we always created systems with a blue background and light yellow font because it was the easiest on the eyes back then. And note the migration time frame because that's a three month uh, period of work and our rec department I think has the most active website and they're, they're very comfortable. They don't use the same platform that we use. They use Weebly. And we use, what do we use? Well, right now we're using WordPress. That's but they've got their own content yes. management system. So we've linked it from our <coughs> page. You can get to their rec departments. Right. Um, and that'll all come over onto our website. Right, because well, it's, it's ultimate. Um, it's optimum to have everything under one right. without having to go to other websites, external websites. And right. And there's no funding that we can get to the system this there's nothing out there now. Several years ago, we probably could have had it done for free because there was a big push in the state for municipal websites, and it was full part at the time because I there was a company was willing to come in. I guess to the, to the at the time they didn't like the uh, continuous annual fee, but did they provide you with a fee schedule for maintenance or? Um, Direct service after the initial. That was, oops, I can look at yours, it's highlighted. That's the right here, 1550 per year. That's live, te live training, technical support. That must involve a certain number of hours, though. And if you go over those hours, usually it's built by the hour. But we probably, in the beginning, um, they provide all the training and support and Normally after hours, it's usually when you get a quote, it's during the normal operating hours. And anything after a normal operating day, you pay an hourly rate. I know right. that's how, um, and so I don't foresee anyone calling tech support after hours for something to be done. Right, but actually what I meant was more like they budget you 100 hours of one-on-one um, -on -one service and then if you need more after that 100 hours is used up, generally it's billable. But this being... See, the, well, the, no, the customer service is open Monday through Friday, excluding holidays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And so it's unlimited during that time. Cool. They don't talk about any limitation. So it's during, it's the Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. Most, most, other than the police or whatever, operate between 8 and 5. <laughs> so the police are the... Is that... 8 and 5 central time since they're in Minnesota, which would be even more convenient. 
nine to six Eastern? It's not. It's not. I'm sorry. I'm being blurred. That's well, no, important. no, no. That's a good question. No, it's Central Standard. Central Standard. It's right before. Okay. Yeah, I knew it was Central. So nine, Standard. nine to six p.m. our time. Nine to six p.m. Okay. Our time. Right. And so yes, it, that would be the. Um, okay. There's one other thing. Um, This system um, provides, well, they call it super forms. I don't know if that was part of the quote, Laura, the super forms, but if, it, if we got that, you could have the, it'd be a great way for the public to submit, okay, the street light on my street is burned out. Even in the kind of after hours if they can't get anyone in the office. It's a great way um, to have registration for all your recreational facilities. Um, you could, I mean, it's just a much more interactive system and an easier way for the public to interact with the folks here after hours. I mean, as far as sending a message and... I have a general sort of concern, not, I think the, the, the they clearly do a good job and the, the, the recommendations from the League of Cities and Towns is, is great. I have a little bit of a concern about the payment system because it's it's advertised very nicely as no charge to the city, but it's fees on people. And I guess it would be depending on what we were using that payment system for. All, I, a convenience fee has a, puts a bad taste in my mouth because of like StubHub or like ticket ticketing service companies that are a private company get that get in between you and the service you're trying to do and add frequently exorbitant fees. We are already paying that fee right now with the current system. With the current using. system. Like I have to use my credit card at the dock and they charge yeah. me 3% above and beyond the purchase. The it covers the credit card. Yeah. Because every credit I understand card that. But the, be the, concern, the concern I have sort of specifically with this, if it, this is expanding what that covers is in, in circumstances like this, and actually there was a huge concern because a bunch of California's like bail systems got put through an, a private intermediary and uh, that disproportionately affected the poorest members of, of communities. So the poorest members of communities often not only needed to use technology that they didn't have or need to find some way to access technology they normally didn't have to then pay exorbitant fees on top of the fees that they incurred on a normal sort of regular basis. So it's, it, it's a convenience fee, but it's a fee. And I guess it would, there, we'd, I just feel like we, there should be a lot of, there should be a caution and thought put into who, who ends up paying. Well, if you don't, then, then if you don't make up the difference, you would have a reduction. So say I owe $1,000 in taxes and I wanted to use my credit card. Yeah. Well, you would lose 3%. Yeah. So I wouldn't be paying the full $1,000 in taxes. Yeah. I'd be paying 900 and whatever it is. Yeah. See, that's the difference. I mean, the state charges a fee now yeah. for the, it's, they call it, the reason why I use the term convenience fee is because that's what the state called it. Because mm -hmm. um, it is convenient, you know, you know a, not everybody, for, right, but yeah. not everybody can, chooses that option to use that service. Um, so then, unfortunately, you, you have to, are, would we end up needing to maintain both systems? Well, yeah, and because if you don't use that, if you don't yeah. pay online, you go to see Mr. Johnson yeah. in his office. And that, but that, you can do it through checking. Yeah, hey, and asking. Your checking, don't cost anything. Yeah, but asking Mr. Johnson. Well, that, he doesn't accept electronic yeah. payments. Are you, are you, well, opinion, he sends it by check. Are you of the opinion that this would time. just, that this would just lighten your, the, your load and the load of your staff? This system? Yes, the addition of it. Like no, no, no. Add no. more. The reconciling? I mean, this is an option we don't have to have. I just brought it up because it was yeah. part of the whole thing. And, and other municipalities, have, you know, a lot of them have started allowing residents yeah. to pay online. Right. And, and I, it um, has a number of advantages, as you've, as you've outlined, yeah. certainly. The um, convenience fee, it, it, or as they call it, they call it no hidden fees. And um, they fully disclose what the fee yeah. will be. Right. So, I mean, I have to call it that because that's what the state referred to it yeah. as. Uh, but also, you have to maintain a certain amount of transactions. You have to have a minimum monthly transaction of five thousand dollars. Right. So if you don't, I mean, I just threw it out there. I mean, we don't yeah. even have to integrate this. This was just something that we've been trying to find a way yeah. to make it easier for 
weekend campers coming into yeah. Prouty Beach, trying to make it easier for um, even yeah. seasonals. A lot of times they'll get a call from a seasonal. Um, that was the only reason we asked for that part of the quote, yeah. and because we knew other municipalities also. I mean, we don't have to go with that. I think. Yeah. It was it was an intent to outline the options, right? But as and I mentioned, we wouldn't we wouldn't um, invoke the service without right. Jim and his staff no, we knowing exactly right. what they're getting into. Well, Good. Some of the problems we have now, they, they can make their payment through credit card, but then there's just still some human work in it. You have to mm -hmm. log down what it's for and what you know that type of thing. If they miss something, mm -hmm. and we spend time downstairs trying to figure out know, what is this money for. You know, particularly down to well, we use it mostly at the dock, but if they don't put down mooring or boat slip or something else or gas, and we're out there searching for what the money was for. Yeah. If there's a way they could take the money and see exactly what it's for, so we know when it comes in. See, that's the design of the system, and they it sounds like the one at the dock isn't set up quite right because you should be able to just have a drop-down box. And, but other than that. Um, Another thing that could be probably, I don't know if you run into it as cumbersome, but I have also with credit card payments is they don't always match the day they go in the bank. Mm -hmm. Do you run into that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And that can add a lot. I know I do bookkeeping for a business in town and you have quote unquote all these credit card sales on one day, but they don't all get put in on the same day. Some sometimes get put in the next day. I don't know if you've run into that. And then you've the got to add the day before, then figure out where and we got problems what day it's supposed to be on. Yeah. No, no, but that's another thing I want to let everyone know too with Jim's office reconciling because we it's, reconcile and cash up daily. Right. Something that's supposed to be on that day is not on there. To the next day, not next day, but it's a couple of days later. And they split the payments too. That's another hiccup that I want with the credit card. Any credit card, that's what businesses run into all the time. Is uh, yeah, you could do a thousand dollars in one day, but actually you might only get eight fifty one day and two fifty another day. Deposit in the bank, and then you got to figure out what. So I guess my thing is it's easy for a person when they're paying with a credit card, but it's not easy for the rest of us to get to figure out what. <laughs> right. So. Theoretically, then if somebody came in to pay with the credit card and the taxes, and it was on that last day, and it wasn't posted on that day, it was posted on another day or two after that, they'd get hit with a late fee, wouldn't they? No, because he would have received it. He would have received it, the payment, even though it's not deposited, he would have received the payment that day as a transaction, <coughs> even though it's not actually deposited. Most credit card. Most credit card transactions aren't deposited in your account for at least, well, Thursdays usually go in Mondays, Friday, Saturday go in Tuesdays. Just give you an idea. Basically, well, they, saying they can pay on one day, they pay the day late. They may have paid on the day or a bit late, but it doesn't get on our system on the right day. Well, it does because you are all up in our, Because you would get told it up at the end of the day because we're missing that payment that they paid. Right. Well, you know, you would have a record of the transaction. We do. Yeah. We do. Do this. We have to go back and get it to the right day. <clears throat> right. But, all right. Well, it's a concern, and thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Yeah. No, that cleared up. Um, so, Laura, um, what? Um, I will get back to Mike and. Uh, Relay the questions that were posed, and we'll bring it back again. Yeah, verify the pricing. Yeah. Make sure this pricing did it. Actually, the pricing that we have has nothing to do with the payment system. Right. We didn't think that anybody would go to the <coughs> payment system. We just wanted to get uh, information out there that it's a possibility for the future. Because we've been trying to figure out a, a way to make it easier. For like a reservation system at the beach. Mm -hmm. The primary, the primary importance of this is our website. Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll go back to Mike and get some more information on the last so, well, Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you're gonna endeavor to maintain the website until such time as you find some the company to take it over. Are you still working on it? <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yes, when I get 
information and Laura needs something. I well, I'm just that. because the minutes and uh, oh, this is still that's still yeah. the only that's requirement. Still, no, yeah. they get up there. They, all the, I have that set up where all they do is they drag them into the they drag them into the shared Google folder and then they're accessible from yeah. the website because you can click on here. I'll just go to it. Um, that, that was my main concern. The things that most people want to know about that, we, that I made like that. well yeah. that I made easier by integrating into our Google Drive. So all they do is they don't even have to go to the website. They just have to go to the Google Drive. And these are all the these are agendas. And so I just made it where. Whoop, I haven't. I have no complaint. That was just yeah. asking. No, that that aspect I made easy. Yeah. Thank you. The more difficult part is when um, the more difficult. Whoops! I close it down. Is posting other things on the actual website because I made it easy for the minutes and for the um, for the all the minutes and the agendas. The more difficult part is when they want to do some of the news items over here. Um, this I made simple by because that's just a Google Calendar I integrated and they can update that. So there's a few things that, you know, which statutorily I made easy. It's just some of the other aspects of the site, um, changing some of the other things. The stuff in the rolling menu, I can update as long as somebody clicks into it with being on Google. So you have to be on a Google search engine to get my updates. And if you go into it using Edge or Explorer, my updates don't show up. So then I end up... Actually, they do show up. Boy, that's good. Yeah, no, they do show up. <laughs> that's new information. Yeah, no, they do show up. But, so that's she all... nowhere. Right. <laughs> like, no. Can we recap? What are the questions that were waiting to be answered before we proceed? The questions that I wrote down were... Um, are you, well, it was before, are you confident the numbers add up? Yeah, I'm pretty good with the numbers. Okay, so the numbers now add up. Uh, the question was posed, how much after three years? Is there a maximum number of hours before an hour the rate kicks mm -hmm. in? Or is it unlimited? We've determined it's on central standard time. And we want the super forms <coughs> feature, which they recommend, but also they say if we don't want the super forms feature, uh, we reduce that total price by 300 bucks. But I would recommend, I would the, recommend super the super forms for 300. Mm -hmm. I mean, that lets you create, you know, much easier interactive forms for the public. Yeah, um, and I'm, I'm not going to research anything about the fee, the fees for the online payment system because we're not ready for that. No. So those are my questions. I talked myself out of it too. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> think not my intention was No, no, <laughs> thinking of the reconciliations and what happens with credit cards that's, and reconciliations in his office. Yeah. Yes, we need to keep the folks in the treasurer's office workable. Right, and, and I haven't even thought about that until we started talking the about it. The convenience piece needs another conversation because there's impacts for the city that the city would then have to eat mm -hmm. versus, you know, the consumer who enjoys the convenience. Yeah. So that's a philosophical discussion. It's but as far as, yeah, we're not ready for that aspect. And no. We don't want to put any more burden on his office right now. Well, at this point, it's easier for us to take a check or cash and get in the system yeah. to deal with that. Would you like me to move that so it's not we have done that. Move probably done that. I'll probably turn it off. You want this? I can. You can probably turn it off. I saw a hand raise. That's, yeah. Are there other sites that you request your quotes from? Or is this sort of the only site that does this type of we thing? We got a quote from a company um, that was very expensive. It was closer to $12,000 a year. So we started looking at um, sites that were more involved in the municipal industry, for lack of a better word. And we came across this one. And we, um, we went in this direction because of the endorsement from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So it seemed to make sense. And then my chatting with my counterparts too, who've used it for, like St. Albans has used Gov Office for at least five, six. I, don't know, I think the guy gentleman said, gentleman said it was five years at least. St. Albans and Rutland's used it for a couple of years, and so. May I make a suggestion? You do find out how much online payments are, just so you have it as background. It's coming. We we did get that. 
That's part of the cost we would go into. We know it's coming, but it's the fee. Well, yes, I know, but it's still, you know. It's there, basically. There's a lot that comes you don't show something. That's all. Right. Okay. So those. So Laura's going to come back. We'll have it on our next agenda. Okay, we'll move on. Mr. Johnson, new business. Yeah, I've got an application for Niles funds. I'll pass it to everybody can look at. The person who meets the qualifications. And those stay confidential. fund set up years ago to help people with can't afford to pay taxes or medical bills and that type of thing. And you're only allowed to use, use it once? Limit. once you only use it twice in five years. Twice in five years. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was looking for an amount requested, but I see that it would yeah. go. That's it's, information you have. Yeah. It's 400 bucks. Yeah. Twice. Twice in five years. Twice in five years. At one time, having people apply every year. Because mm -hmm. we were, right. <coughs> I have the other thing, I, the other thing I've got is I've got a bunch of liquor licenses that need to be signed. Okay. And that's something that we have to do yeah, here at the line. table. They've all been checked by the chief, so they're all. Yeah. We have usually with local licenses, we have the chief of police to, to make sure that they're okay. Are to there, may I ask, are there any new ones? No. In there? Everything the same. <coughs> So we need we need a motion to approve the Niles yep. fund request. So moved. Motion made. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Bowen, seconded by Mr. Wilson. Discussion? And hearing none, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I have a sort of random question about the Niles fund. Does the city seek or accept donations for the fund? We do accept donations, yes. Okay. But you don't go out of your way looking for them? The city hasn't in the past, no. Okay, no. Just curious. So they, they can only spend the interest on the account. So but if they were more money, money they would be more interest, is that? Yeah. We'll accept them, but we'll probably, I'll wait for your check in the mail. <laughs> well, these are being signed as one No, that's uh, I signed that one. Yeah, I do have one more thing. Laura, Laura can jump in to explain this, but um, the auditors audit grants, specifically for the police department, I guess this one is, they want policies on everything in-house, on hand. So uh, I've got a policy here for petty cash and a policy for accounts receivable. So the petty cash one says, the petty cash fund of $300 should be in the custody of the treasurer's office, the funds should be used for minor purchases of an immediate nature. Receipts for purchases must be provided to the treasurer's office immediately after the purchase. The city cash fund is to be reconciled monthly and replenished periodically. The fund will remain secured in the treasurer's vault and will be accessed by treasurer's staff only. We do that now, but they need a policy, written policy signed in, in uh, on a file. The accounts receivable one reads, the IR billing, 
is created by the department head manager for their for their services supplies rendered and is then forwarded to the city clerk treasurer's office to be put into the account receivable module an invoice generated on the city's letterhead is mailed to the recipient a copy of the invoice and the original ar billing document is kept in a file for each vendor. When payment is received, the payment is put through the NEMRIC cash receipts module and a copy of the check and receipt is filed in the account receivable vendor file. These came right from the auditor and the policies? So no. the standard? No, that's what we do now. I, I had to put those in writing because oh, they want them in writing and on file. Oh, okay. Policy set up, set right. adopted by the council. So may I ask, how do they compare with other I hope they compare favorably, and that's what we've been doing for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I think each town does, or towns that aren't on the NEMRIC system will have a different policy. But, but you're on the NEMRIC? Yeah. So Everything runs, yeah. Just okay. for the minutes, yeah. We probably should have a motion before we start. Yeah, I need a motion. Oh, well, well, it's like, yeah. So it's a petty cash policy and a county receivable policy. So we need a motion to approve both of those policies. If someone so chooses. I will, I will so choose. <laughs> okay. Is there a second to the motion to sure. approve both policies? Motion made by Mr. Wilson. Sure. Second by Mr. Wilson. Any discussion? And here and now, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Motion carries. Thank you. Well, that way you don't need that. That's just a check going to the liquor oh. control. <laughs> But a lot more, um, I know you said the auditors, but a lot more uh, grants and other, um, organiz other organizations we deal with, both for grants and other things like that, are requiring written policies like that to be, it also helps meet the accounting standards and Absolutely. all the audit standards. So, Any other new business, Mr. Johnson? That's it for me. Okay. Mr. Wilson? Any new business? No, no, sure. James, anything new? Laura? Okay. Old business, Mr. Johnson. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Nothing. I said, you knew that. I might have old business. Mr. Boyne or Julie will work. No, no, I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say, Julie, but you might have old business from sitting in the audience. <laughs> you're, you're right. That's why I said old business. So Thank you. Sure. No. Any old business? Yes, I've got one question. Uh, where do we stand with the old barn? Does anything come of that? Um, I know that uh, Frank would be very pleased to continue to keep it in the city's research rather than tearing it down. Mm -hmm. And there's no money in the budget. To Certainly tear it no, down, we no took it out. The budget to tear it down, and um, I think there is a wish or a desire to sort of keep it available just in case the research with a consultant um, brings forward an opportunity for that. So it's lingering. Okay, you haven't heard anything at all from the old house. No. Okay. no. Any other openness? Anything? Okay. Just a status report on the land purchase and the land sale uh, that was approved by the council a few weeks back. And the, um, the Green Lantern solar contract, it's all under review by our city attorney. And I would expect a little bit of a delay on that. And the um, individuals who are interested in purchasing and selling property have been kept apprised. So. Expect a little bit of a delay because they're going back and forth with contracts. That takes some time. Okay. Just May I? Uh, obviously, I was sitting in Coventry listening to other things when this was discussed. And I just have a very brief <coughs> description of the Green Lantern. Uh, that that is a solar company that has a um, solar farm in Derby. And they've approached all the municipalities and schools in the area about engaging in a net metering contract. And the council has approved uh, looking into that. So they presented us with a contract, and that contract is uh, up for review. They only have a certain amount of, um, I believe it's kilowatts, that they're going to produce. So they're going to um, distribute them to the municipalities who are interested or who can benefit from them. 
Okay. I just wanted to make sure it was what I thought it yeah. was. Thank you. Same Maybe. thing as Derby. Yeah. So if you cover them, it's a... And we well, have I've read about it, but yes. Yeah. We have an agreement that's working very well with Great Bay. Yeah. Um, I forget how much it reduces. Was it about, we get about, about 10, 12,000? Oh, yeah. And this would be about the same, about 13. It reduces thousand. our electric bill by about 10 to 12,000 a year, which is, I mean, considering our annual electric bill is six, six figures. For the city, and every little bit yeah. helps. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on the old business? No, thank you. Okay. The next regular city council meeting will be April 17, 2017, and then the Centennial Planning Committee meeting will be the same date at 5 p.m. in this room for the Centennial Planning. And now we need an executive session for pending litigation contract for. Title 1 VSA 313 A1 A A1 E. And we would need, it's a two step motion. We need this first motion read, and then we'll need the second one. I would move that uh, the premature general knowledge of the subject of the anticipated executive session would clearly place the board and or persons involved in a substantial disadvantage. A motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Sure. Motion made and seconded. Discussion on that motion. Could there be an explanation as to what the subject matter is? That's certainly not confidential. It's the litigation with the Village of Derby. With the Village of Derby yes. and the water? Yes. Okay. Thank and you. are you, ex I'm sorry, uh, you were about to say something. Oh, no. no uh, <laughs> I do expect to have any action after this meeting. Will we have a second, a step two motion to make? Yes. Oh, so let's vote on the first one. So the, all those in favor of the first motion, say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. And we'll have the second motion. Uh, we would like, I move to uh, enter executive session for confidential attorney-client communications concerning contracts and pending litigation. So a motion has been made. Is there a second? Motion has been made and seconded. All those, any discussion? And all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. Motion carries. I'm now going to renew uh, my colleague's question. Do you expect there to be any action at the end of this executive session? There could yes. be a motion made. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I can you can email me or if you oh, hang around. So kind of email it to me. Yeah. That would be helpful. I have a sense of how long you might chat or. Uh, <laughs> we, we almost get criticized for too long. We'll be, we'll be too long because I know every minute is too long. But I bet we'll be in here for a good half hour. Okay, yeah. that's what I was wondering. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So then I will call tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, call either before 10 or after 3. Before 10. Or email me. That would be so much better. Any other discussion? Then I'll say, 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 I